Could it simply be coincidental that James and Lane describe the same Taurus dynamic and that both of these people have been harassed extensively by government and military agencies? To some, the idea of UFOs may sound crazy. And yet, from another perspective, it is completely plausible. The Earth is about four and a half billion years old. That's 4,500 million years old. What if there's another planet that's almost exactly like us, almost exactly, 4,501 million years old? They're a million years ahead of us. And on a galactic scale, they're almost our twin brothers. So where are we going to be in a million years? We'll have solved all these problems, and there's another way, uh, whether it's wormholes or warping space. There's got to be a way to generate energy so that you can pull it out of the vacuum. And the fact that they're here shows us that they've found the way. This is a major uh, shock uh, to the human system that is uh, in process. I understand why people in our generation, people who aspire to positions of political leadership, etc., never dare go near that question because it's a worldview challenge. It's a fundamental worldview challenge. So here we are, a relatively immature species struggling with possible self-destruction. If aligning with the Taurus does hold the key to a new form of clean, safe energy access, imagine the implications. This could be the most important technology breakthrough of our times. So who wouldn't want to have an energy source that's unlimited and freely available? That turned out to be a key question. And that's what led me down the next rabbit hole. It turns out that scientists as far back as the early 1900s have been developing alternative ways to access electricity without combustion. Nikola Tesla believed he had tapped into what he called radiant energy. Many scientists believe he was accessing what's now called free energy. But before Tesla could finish the project, his financier, banker J.P. Morgan, who had a monopoly on the copper used for electrical lines, recognized how Tesla's invention could transmit electricity without wires. He then shut down Tesla's funding. Tesla's lab was burned down and he was ostracized, all for trying to implement his vision of unlimited energy for everyone. A modern day inventor, Adam Trombley, was inspired by Tesla's work and by the possibilities of the Taurus. Trombley built a dynamo, a direct current generator that accessed electrical power right out of the air. We were trying to demonstrate that by mimicking the magnetic field of a planet and rotating this device, we could actually create a dynamo that would work. And in fact, it did work, and it does work. So when we contemplate nature, when we contemplate Jupiter, or we contemplate a dynamo like the Earth rotating in space, we're basically talking about a magnet which is rotating in space. And the lines of flux of the magnet are pouring down and through in this toroidal pattern of the magnetic field. It's also expanding and contracting. It's breathing. It's taking in the energy of space, literally, and transforming it. Right here in this toroid, we have enough energy to transform the entire Earth. And that's not just a theoretical statement. It's literally true. To contemplate the implications of this means that every single place on Earth suddenly has power. Every single person on Earth suddenly has power. We have universal abundance. Trombley had been invited to demonstrate one of his generators at the United Nations and the U.S. Senate. But these events were undermined by the first Bush administration. Then the device itself was taken in a government raid. Trombley's experience isn't unique. Almost every time I found an inventor with a promising new technology in the field of free energy, he told a similar story of suppression. Inventor John Bedini, began working with Tesla's theories of radiant energy decades ago and has produced an assortment of battery charging devices that generate more energy than it takes to run them. 
He announced that he was going to start offering them at low cost. Soon after that, he was attacked in his lab and warned not to produce the devices. For his own safety, he had to let go of marketing free energy. These are all devices from labs I personally visited. Now. Now the quality of this footage is obviously poor and I'm not expecting this to convince you. My point is that being there with these inventors, accompanied by experts, and seeing these new energy devices in operation convince me that the technology is real. And the implications of that to me are absolutely thrilling. Canadian John Hutchison not only created some free energy batteries, but also used Tesla's theories to counter gravity, to make objects float. This could revolutionize the field of propulsion. His lab was raided and equipment was taken by police and government officials in 1978, 1989, and again in 2000. One of the scientists we were going to interview for this film was Dr. Eugene Malov, an engineer from MIT and Harvard, and editor of Infinite Energy magazine, which covers both theoretical and technological developments in the new energy field. Dr. Malov was mysteriously beaten to death in 2004. If these inventors were all hoaxers and charlatans, I wondered why are they being suppressed so consistently and so brutally? I asked free energy inventor Adam Trombley why he thought this technology was being suppressed and if the UFO phenomenon was related. We've had major military people at great risk to themselves say, yes, these things are real. Why do you think the military industrial complex doesn't want that statement to be made? Because you start thinking about what kind of technology is behind that. That's the bottom line. The suppression of UFO phenomena is hand in hand with the suppression of so-called free energy. The energy is extracted from the fabric of the space around us which means it cannot be metered. That is a direct threat to the single largest industry in the world, energy. It's goodbye ExxonMobil, goodbye oil, goodbye coal, goodbye linear transmission of electricity through power lines, all that gone. Unfortunately, it's someone's $200 trillion piggy bank the proven oil and gas and coal reserves are worth north of $200 trillion. This information coming out would completely change geopolitical power more than anything since well in recorded human history. And it would happen in a generation. I started to examine the breakthrough solutions and much to my surprise these concepts have been proven in hundreds of laboratories throughout the world and yet they have not really seen the light of day. Rather than smashing things together and trying to control the explosion, these new technologies rely on blending, of dancing with what naturally is. The common denominator of all the free energy devices I've seen is that they mimic, in one way or another, the torus energy shape. You don't have to believe in free energy technology to be concerned about the repression of ideas and inventions. I found myself thinking, what better way to justify our dependence on oil, coal, nuclear, and other dangerous and dirty technologies than to claim there are no better, cheaper alternatives? It was my beloved wife and creative partner, Kimberly, who kept bringing me back to the human implications of my scientific research. For me, as intriguing as the Taurus and ETs and free energy are, the most compelling question was, would understanding these things really help alleviate human suffering in any way? And it turns out it can. So much of the pain on the planet has to do with the lack of access to energy. Can you stay warm? Can you get food and water? 
Can you get hospital care? All that has to do with energy access. If there is a fundamental pattern, which makes sense to me that evolution would be efficient in that way, and we can align with that pattern to create new technologies that will solve these problems, then it's worth it to me to open my mind to these socially taboo subjects. If the new energy technologies were to be set free worldwide, uh, the change would be profound. It would uh, affect everybody. It would be uh, applicable everywhere. Th these technologies are absolutely the, the most important thing that's happened in the history of the world. So given the stakes, I decided to ask who's benefiting from suppressing scientific research? Whose wealth and power are threatened by access to clean, free energy? Who has a motive to set up a world where so few have so much and so many have so little? As an independent researcher, I followed one of the cardinal rules of investigative journalism. If a story doesn't make sense, follow the money.